Hello and welcome to today's Nairobi News Bulletin. My name is Christine Maema. The Chinese company that was contracted by the government to construct the 1.2 billion shillings Sigiri Bridge in Budalangi has taken responsibility for its collapse. The project manager of the Chinese Overseas Construction and Engineering Company project, Jerome Hua, however defended the company against claims of not adhering to safety standards during the construction. We cannot rule out the possibility of foul play. We cannot rule out the possibility of sabotage. This country, because of negative politics, because of poisoned politics, really has exhibited that there is a possibility of economic sabotage targeting key government projects. We are unbowed. We are unfazed. The dream for Sigir Bridge lives on. And we are confident that Sigri Bridge shall stand here as a symbol of our determination. Well, this bridge, it, uh, from engineering part, it could be fi fixed or repaired. And uh, as to the time, uh, we need to find out the detail where is that uh, damage. I will, uh, after checking all the parts, all the areas, and then I will find out, find out the proposal and find out the solution. And the principle will be safety quality and of the quickest time. And we found out there were some of them, they are slightly injured, and we immediately took them to hospital. The National Super Alliance is set to launch its own manifesto later today, coming hours after the Jubilee Party led by its own. NASA intends to capitalize on the failures of the Jubilee Party to gain an advantage over them in the August polls. The manifesto, that until now remains a closely guarded secret, is also said to be a harmonized version of all the blueprints from the constituent parties forming the Super Alliance. NASA is also decentralizing its agenda from national to county level. Four suspected thugs were on Tuesday morning shot dead by police in Karen after they were trailed from Kayole. According to a police report, the suspects had stolen a motor vehicle and were planning to commit a robbery in Karen. An AK-47 rifle with eight bullets was recovered from the suspects. A combined unit from Buruburu and Kayole police station trailed and intercepted the gang before they could commit any crime. Police also recovered a mobile phone believed to have been stolen from a member of the public in Kayole. The U.S. Supreme Court handed a victory to President Donald Trump by reviving parts of a travel ban from people from six Muslim-majority countries that he said is needed for national security but which opponents decry as discriminatory. The first executive order, which sparked mass protests and confusion at airports, was halted by the courts in February. The justices narrowed the scope of lower court rulings that had completely blocked key parts of a March 6th executive order that Trump had said was needed to prevent terrorism in the United States, allowing his temporary ban to go into effect for people with no strong ties, such as family or business, to the United States. Some said they felt the ban was too extreme and penalized individuals from nations with predominantly Muslim populations. They need to take the security measures because it's not a good time over right now. But still, they can't just, you know, ban everybody. The court issued its order on the last day of its current term and agreed to hear oral arguments during its next term starting in October so it can decide finally whether the ban is lawful in a major test of presidential powers. Trump's March 6 order called for a blanket 90-day ban on people from Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria and Yemen and a 120-day ban on all refugees while the government implemented stronger vetting procedures. The court allowed a limited version of the refugee ban which had also been blocked by courts to go into effect. You know, as a practicing Muslim American, I can tell you that ISIS does not represent Islam. And so seeing this travel ban and seeing how some people are, you know, advocating for this ban, it's, it's concerning for me. And finally, police have dismissed reports on social media indicating that two children were injured in a commotion at an event attended by President Uhuru Kenyatta in Vihiga County on Sunday. Western Regional Police Coordinator Moses Ombati said officers manning a gate at Kaimo City Teachers College complex lobbed tear gas to disperse rowdy youth after they tried to force their way in without being frisked. He said those spreading the reports were out to mislead the public and cause unnecessary panic. 
And that's it from us for now. For these and more stories, log on to www.nairobinews.co.ke. I am Christine Maima. Goodbye.